quantum mechanics is really the play and display of information, the play and display of potentiality, waves of information, waves of potential electron. And it's important, the word potential. This isn't the world of electrons. It's the world of potential electrons. But when you have, you have to ask the question, waves of what, really? What is the field that is waving? Is it the ocean? <laughs> no, it's a universal ocean. An ocean of pure potentiality, an ocean of abstract potential existence. We call it the unified field, or superstring field. And that's what we're made of. Connectivity, among all things, is a basic constituent of the fabric of reality. It's very difficult to wrap your mind around that. But Erwin Schrodinger said, he's one of the founders of quantum mechanics, that entanglement, which is this idea of this connectivity, is not just a property of quantum mechanics, it's the property. It's the property of quantum mechanics that makes it very, very strange. And it doesn't seem to fit in with our ordinary world, our ordinary experience, but in fact, it, it actually does. taught in school that the world is made of stuff, of matter, of mass, of atoms. Atoms make up molecules, molecules make up materials, and everything is made of that. But atoms actually are mostly empty. For example, if this ball were the nucleus of an atom, a proton and a hydrogen atom, for example, then the electron circling this, which would describe the outer limits of that atom, would be out by that mountain over there, roughly 20 miles away. And everything in between is empty. In fact, the universe is mostly empty. However, when we go down in scale in the emptiness, we eventually come to a level, the fundamental level of space-time geometry, the fine basement level of the universe, where there's information, there's a pattern. It's called the Planck scale, and it's the fabric of the universe. And at that level, there's information that's been there since the Big Bang. So most of the universe even of matter, is actually empty. Most people think that the vacuum is empty. But for internal self-consistency consistency of quantum mechanics and relativity theory, there is required to be the equivalent of 10 to the 94 grams of mass energy, each gram being E equals mc squared kind of energy. Now, that's a huge number, but what does it mean practically? Practically, if I can assume that the universe is flat and more and more astronomical data is showing it's pretty darn flat, if I can assume that, then if I take the volume or take the vacuum within a single hydrogen atom, that's about 10 to the minus 23 cubic centimeters. If I take that amount of vacuum and I take the latent energy in that, there is a trillion times more energy there than in all of the mass of all of the stars and all of the planets out to 20 billion light years. 
That's big. That's big. And if consciousness allows you to control even a small fraction of that, creating a big bang is no problem. British Aerospace are all trying to tap into this incredible, unimaginably large energy sea. And they feel if they can tap this, we can travel to different galaxies. So they understand that in empty space, there is this unbelievable uh, energy. The major basic idea that quantum physics implies, which makes us understand this or even think about this new paradigm, the thing which is, is that there's a, this underground. There's got to be a realm of existence which cannot be ever, ex you know, touched on or seen, which bubbles into the existence giving rise to our understanding of the world. The tighter physics have tried to grasp onto physical reality, to understand what it's really made of, what are the core building blocks of life, at the basis of it all. Life, the universe, slips through your fingers. And you come up with something that's increasingly abstract, increasingly abstract, to the come to the realm of pure abstraction. And that's what the unified field is. It's pure abstract potential, pure abstract being, pure abstract self-aware consciousness which rises in waves of vibration to give rise to the particles, the people, everything we see in the vast universe. What makes up things are not a more things, but what makes up things are ideas, concepts, information. Another strange fact is that objects never really touch each other. When I dribble this ball, the atoms of the ball and the atoms of the ground never actually meet. So nobody touches nothing. Come on, put your stuff down. Somebody's gonna take it. Like I said, this is my court. It's no problem. <laughs> The first inkling in physics that we got that time ain't what it seemed to be uh, came with relativity. That was the first inkling that that time was not absolute. It was not the absolute ruler of the universe. That God Almighty did not say one second, one second, one second, one second, one meter, one meter, one meter. You're in a gravitational field. Your head is actually moving at a slightly faster rate than your feet. The second law of thermodynamics says that things unwind and move forward. So that gives an error of time. But at the quantum world, in the micro world, the second law of thermodynamics doesn't seem to hold, and things can, can go backwards or be timeless. The fundamental equations of physics have a property which is referred to as time reversal symmetry. And what time reversal symmetry means is that a set of uh, laws, which are time reversal symmetric, are laws that have the following feature. For any process that's in accord with those laws, the same process going backwards is exactly as much in accord with those laws, okay? That ought to mean that um, that milk jumps out of coffee as often as it dissolves into it, that people get younger looking as often as they get older looking, that we have the same kind of access vis-a-vis -vis knowledge to the future as we do to the past, that by acting now we ought to be able to influence the past just as much as we can influence the future. All of that is wrong. All of that, that is, comes into violent conflict with the way we psychologically experience the world. One of the most unpalatable ideas still, in spite of the fact that quantum physics has been around a long time, is the possibility or the notion that the future can have a causative effect on the present. We believe that the past can have a causative effect on the present. I hold the ball, I drop it, it falls. Cause, effect, when it hits the ground. But could the ground be the cause of my dropping the ball in the first place?